morning, namaskar, namaskaramu. My name is Palash Roy Chaudhary, and I am the country manager for Pratt & Whitney. So my sole goal in life is to grow Pratt & Whitney's presence here, support the Indian market. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Many of us, many of you, uh, were here about nine months back when we did the groundbreaking ceremony. Uh, so thank you once again for joining us. Uh, this is indeed a significant milestone for us, as Andy and Medj mentioned. Uh, this training center is the third leg of our global triad. Once uh, our first training center came up in our headquarters in East Hartford, Connecticut, about 80 years back, followed by China about 15 years back, and now we are starting a new journey in India. Uh, the 120 million or 150 million Whatever that number was, three years back, that was reported, that was a misquotation. We had never committed to that kind of numbers. That's number one. Number two, as far as our investments in India are concerned, we measure it in different terms. We don't get into the financials. If you look at our history uh, in India over the last 50 to 60 years, our investments have been in people. We have 1,500 people, engineering people, who are working with our partners in Hyderabad, in Bangalore, and they are integrated into our product development teams. So we are bringing skill, we are bringing technology, we work very, very closely with uh, centers of higher learning like the IITs, the IICs, to do some very, very high-end research. This is a significant investment that we have made. So our investments are more strategic, and, and we don't like to disclose the financial numbers. Of course, we are doing a lot of local employment. As a matter of fact, Pratt & Whitney, as I just mentioned, has 1,500 people working with our partners here, Quest, Sci, and others, who work on our products and services. They are housed in our partners. So they are all local employment that is generated by Pratt & Whitney. We have direct employment as well as indirect employment. Pratt & Whitney is part of a larger group called United Technologies. We have 6,400 people that are direct employees of United Technology in the country, and almost an equal number that are indirect employees with our partners. So we are a significant employee generator not only in the state, but also in the country. The tax structure in India is not conducive to MRO investments. And as, as a matter of fact, the Honorable Minister has said it himself that he's working with his counterparts to address that uh, challenge right now. So, uh, you know, I also speak in terms of the industry because I head the American Chambers and FICI uh, on the aviation side. And we have all made, industry has made a representation that we need to address the tax structure to bring in investments into India in manufacturing, in MRO. Right now, it is not conducive. They are in place. In the last 10 years, the CAGR has been double digit. As I mentioned in my comments earlier, despite that significant growth, less than 2% of Indians have ever flown in an aircraft. So there is a huge runway in front of us. The macroeconomic factors that are driving growth are positive. We, are, we as, as Medj and Andy, mentioned, we are one of the fastest, if not the fastest growing economy, large economy in the world. We are, we've got one of the largest middle classes. We've got uh, a very, very strong pool of young individuals entering the workforce, over 100 million people. And as you all know today, workforce is very migratory. You know, 50 years back, people would work in their environments and nearby where they grew up. Today, people from Bangalore are working in Delhi, and Delhi people are working in Mumbai and so on. So they travel a lot. Add to that the fact that low-cost airlines, new technology, and I can talk about some of the technologies that we are bringing in, is reducing the ticket price as a percentage of your monthly or annual salaries. So these are all fundamentals that drive the aviation business in India, and we see a significant runway in front of us. Your question about why the airlines are not doing well, they are very you know, diverse and you know, complex situations around that, and much of that is normal. I mean, around the world, you will see airlines going out of business and new airlines coming in. So don't judge uh, the aviation market by, you know, some of the performance of the engines uh, or the airlines right now. Significant growth in middle class, expendable, uh, you know, uh, cash in hand, growth in regional aviation, better connectivity, demographic dividend, entry of uh, new technology. These are all the factors that will drive. Uh, so look, I mean, all of us know that the fuel taxes are a big challenge in India. When you compare to uh, you know, the global benchmarks, fuel 
is about 20 to 25 percent globally uh, as a you know percentage line item, you know, cash operating cost line line item. In India, that is as high as 50 percent because of some of these taxes. Now, what our technology does, and I'm going to request Andy to talk about uh, technology a little bit, from, but from a commercial aspect, uh, our technology uh, drives down the fuel burn by double digits, you know, 15, 16 percent. Now, if you are reducing 15 percent of a line item that is 50 percent of your cost, think about what that means uh, in terms of commercial benefit to the airlines. Again, all of us know who, who work and live here that most of the airlines are operating at razor thin margins. So if you drop that kind of cash to their bottom lines, it is obviously a very tempting uh, proposition that we are offering with this new technology. That is just the commercial piece. What our technology also does is, in addition to less fuel burn, we also are significantly reducing noise. So our noise footprint is anywhere between 50 to 75 percent lower compared to some comp contemporary engines. What that means is you have longer operating hours, more direct approach into uh, busy cities. For those of us who are living in big cities, you have noticed that airports that were built 20, 30 kilometers outside the city limits, today the city has encroached that airport. And there are public interest litigations because of noise pollution at night. So when you reduce your noise footprint by 50 to 75 percent, you're creating a very uh, good environment for people living around the airports. That's another benefit. A direct impact of reduction of fuel burn is also reduction in carbon emissions. Each of our engines on an annual basis uh, on, on regular domestic service will save as much as 3,000 tons of carbon emissions. What that means is that 3,000 tons of carbon emission is equivalent to planting 700,000 trees per aircraft plug per year. So those are the benefits that we are offering with our new technology and request Andy to talk about the technology and the uh, geometry of the engine. That's driving the uh, uptake in the engine.